All right, check this out. That is the fibula right there. This is the tibia of the big bone. It sits in that cradle, which I told you before, is on the end of the, you know, is on your foot. And then the other piece just lays up on the side, falls off. The big toe is out here. Now, this, this is just fascinating because now they can see using sound. Sound is nothing more than light only it's extremely slow. It's exactly identical to light. I will explain it. They just don't understand. Light is nothing more than a really fast explosion against molecules that are in front of it. Sound is a little slower and the molecules that are in front of it de de determine how fast it moves. If you have dense molecules, it's going to move a little slower, it's going to impact a little harder, you're going to see a difference in the way it concusses. And this is now they have these ex um, acoustic concussion uh, receptors that can tell how hard is that thing hitting. So, in, in other words, if you have a laser that's tuned to a certain frequency, exactly 100 hertz, and when it hits calcium, it's going to bounce back so much of it because the calcium is so hard and it has so many electrons and so forth. But if it hits hydrogen, it's not only going to back bounce off just a little bit, let's say. And if it hits lead, it, 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 it's going to bounce off a ton, whatever it is. But when they, whatever the bounce back is, they turn that into a digital output, and now they can see, like th this well inside of the, the as you're alive, actually as this is pulsing through your body, they can see this now using these sound waves, which are not invasive and damaging to you. So I'm going to let it start, but this is really exciting stuff. Here goes. This is Seeker, and. Um, and this just came out, uh, well, I guess that's about a year ago. Now, here goes. And this is new technology, and it's the way they're using lasers, which is also the, what I've been doing with Rod Warren. Is It's almost the same. It's absolutely amazing. They're using, they're not using a Venturi, but they're using the concussion, just like we do, but we use a Venturi to accelerate it. Watch. Inside your own body. You may only be able to picture images like this or this, but an emerging technique gives us pictures that look more like this using laser induced sound waves. All right, laser induced sound waves. So the lasers are actually creating the vibration of the molecules. Early technologies that use this technique seem to provide us with highly detailed, super clear images of the structures. In and I, I just want to say it's a pulsed laser, exactly what we were using. Rod and I use a pulsed laser, pip, 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 so that it, it, it shakes the molecules that are in front of it. Inside our bodies, with no discomfort or dangerous ionizing radiation involved. And this promising technique is called photoacoustic imaging. A basic breakdown goes like this. Different biological materials have different chemical structures. The hemoglobin in your blood, for example, is chemically different from the calcium in your bones. And this means that they're able to absorb different amounts of energy. Photoacoustic imaging takes advantage of these differences in composition by tuning laser light to the wavelength that can be absorbed. All right, now she's talking about tuning laser light. Well, how do you tune a laser? Well, we can tune it using a Venturi, and I'm sure that's what they're doing too. They don't realize it, but that's what they're doing. They're, in other words, they're making that Venturi create a faster or a slower wavelength. So if it starts out red and it's 100 nanometers, let's say, and then you pinch it, it might go out to 200 nanometers. But in between, you can pinch it a little less, a little less, you get 110, 120, 130, you get your, and then, and as you're stepping up, you're stepping up through your potassium, calcium, all of these different things, all these different metals, and the different frequencies determine what you're going to see inside of that body. That's, that's tuning the laser. Absorbed by the tissue you want to look at. So an apparatus sends tuned... All right, here's what Rod and I are doing. Send an impulse red laser. Now, instead of just having something absorb it, 
and transmit out the, to an ultrasonic sensor. We're putting a Venturi in here, which makes that pulse laser accelerate. And then we're, Rob is looking at it and taking the pictures of how it's, it's become accelerated and how the particles splay out. But this is almost the same thing they're doing. Pulses of laser light to a specimen or body part, and the tissue that can absorb that wavelength of light absorbs that energy and heats up. And when the tissue heats... All right, let me just back that up one second so that I don't want you to miss this. Every time that laser pulses... Well, actually, let me show you it in our, our stuff. All right, so now we know how this, the, the light is bouncing and we're picking up these different frequencies that were determined by whatever absorbed it in the middle. So whatever comes out the other side, we're picking up those frequencies, turning them into light. This is the ultrasonic sensor. All right, so here we go again. Light absorbs that energy and heats up. And when the tissue heats up, it expands ever so slightly. Okay, now again, more electron flood theory. The tissue heats up. What does that mean? It means it absorbed an electron. It absorbed some light. And the light is a, controls a reading. It, it makes it do that. And anytime anything pushes against anything else or expands, it creates light. Light is the signature of expansion of interaction. It's interaction expansion. It's either crushing or it's expanding and pushing the things away from it so it's crushing outwards or it's crushing inwards. Either way, you're going to get this glow. Here goes. Expansion and then rapid cooling generates a wave of oscillating pressure in the surrounding material. Same as what I was talking about before. Boom, 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 boom. Oscillating waves depends upon what the material is, how intense the wave is, how fast it comes back at you. The rest of your body or the air, which is, in the simplest possible interpretation, a sound wave. That's the acoustic part of the name, giving us photoacoustic imaging. Then, ultrasonic detectors capture these microscopic changes in pressure, and processing software reconstructs an image based on what those sensors hear. It's pretty the reconstruction is th what they hear is frequencies. They turn those frequencies into something we can see as light, different colors. Be different from other current imaging technologies. CT scans and x-rays and PET scans use damaging ionizing radiation to see inside your body. Whenever they talk about ionizing radiation, it means that it's something is hitting it so hard that it's making electrons go flying out of its molecular structure. That's ion, ions. Ions are, are literally electrons. Poof! They're just coming in so hard that they're damaging them, throwing them out. Well, what can that do? That can hurt your DNA. That can hurt all kinds of things because you're, you're really literally causing electrons to just explode inside you. Now, what are they doing? They're just, they're just doing that. And then they're feeling the pressure that comes out of that and turning it into light. Body. So we want to limit how many times we expose someone to that radiation. An MRI involves an extremely strong magnetic field, which can be a problem for anyone with any kind of metal implants, and they often take many minutes to form an image. And even ultrasounds, which also use sound waves, actually aren't as clear as this newer option. Ultrasounds are more of a catch-all. You can see everything, all the tissues in a specific area. Whereas with photoacoustic imaging, you can pick and choose what you want to see just by tuning the wavelength of the laser beam. And while this technique is only just starting to be clinically explored as an alternative to more traditional imaging... I just want to say something. When she says tuning the laser just to one specific frequency so you can see one specific type of material, in this case it's arteries or veins or whatever they are, it's blood vessels. Now, you can have multiple lasers going on at the same time and see the same things inside of here that have, are different materials. So you can see the bones and the blood and everything at the exact same time, all in different colors, I believe. Now, like she said, it's just getting started, but I don't see any reason that shouldn't be.
imaging and prototype clinical machinery is just now being developed, the idea has actually been around for more than a century. Alexander Graham Bell, you know, the guy who invented the telephone, was the first to observe that electromagnetic waves could induce sound waves when applied to materials. But the technology that's just started to emerge and be refined in the last decade takes that initial observation and makes it into something that could seriously revolutionize medicine. Imaging veins and arteries this way, for example, can tell us more than ever before. You see, the blue is the uh, veins, the red is the arteries. I, I, it's, and and I, I, they should be able to bring this down to absolutely incredible to be, to be able to see the bacteria. Well, these are all the things that I've been studying now. The, the, the immune system is based on bacteria. If we could find out all the different colors of different bacteria and, and assign them a signature color, and then we could see, poof, is it in there or isn't it in there? If it's not in there, you could be sick. If you don't have the bacteria, or if there's too much of it in there, you're going to be sick. And this is the absolute tool to do it with. Or about changes in someone's circulation, or abnormalities in blood flow related to cardiovascular disease. We can see how tissues are faring after surgeries. We can see what kind of effect a drug is having. The applications are really kind of stunning when you start to think about them all. Because not only can this technology be used to image tissues at extremely high resolution, you can also introduce a foreign material, like a contrast dye or a specifically designed nanoparticle, to see things you might not be able to otherwise. These substances can be tailor-made to bind to certain kinds of cancer cells or other forms of gene expression. And then you can tune the laser to the wavelength absorbed by that contrast or that nanoparticle, giving you an extremely detailed and accurate picture of how a disease manifests in your body. And I guarantee you, you're not ready for what's maybe the coolest part. There are several companies that are making versions of this technology that's highly portable. I'm gonna tell you right now, at some point they will be able to make that and, and use your cell phone, pretty much. They'll be able to put some kind of sensor in your cell phone that will be this acoustic sensor. And, you know, at, at some point this will happen because whatever signals you receive into that acoustic vibrational sensor will be turned into light waves, frequencies that are colors. And then you'll just click and say, let's see what it looks like. Blip, and there it is. There's your blood moving through there. And there's your, you know, whatever. I, I don't know how deep they'll be able to go into your body. But, you know, there's a lot to do, and obviously this is just getting started, but boy, I'll tell you, this is exciting as hell, because this is exactly, exactly the area that I have been working in for years, and it's just all of a sudden blossomed, like, absolutely amazing what's happened within the last year or so. Incredible. And are designing software that uses machine learning to identify different structures on the image for the user. Both of these developments means it's possible that some patients could use this technology themselves to monitor their own health and things like progress during recovery from a condition or a surgery. Technologies like this are an exciting look at how we're improving our understanding of our own bodies and the way we can look at and treat them. I love how physics and engineering and computer science and medicine are all coming together to make this happen. And I think it's a great example. That's the key. All these things are coming together because they have always separated out all of these different sects. I'm a physicist, I'm a geologist, I'm a uh, biologist, I'm all these different things. And nobody could cross each other's boundaries. Now listen to this again. This is, this is critically important that, that education changes. Education has been segmentalized. It's been put into a little box here and a little box there. And if you try to go into that box from your box, they'll say, stay the hell out of my box. And that's what happened to me and it happened to Velikovsky and it happened to everybody in history that has tried to open up somebody else's box and say, hey, how can you explain this? He said, I don't have to explain it to you. You're outside of my box. Stay the hell away and the way we can look at and treat them. I love how physics and engineering and computer science and medicine are all coming together to make this happen. And I think it's a great example of how big leaps in science are, by necessity, cross-disciplinary collaborations that, by the sound of it, will continue to improve lives all over the world. If you want even more on new and improved ways that we can monitor our own health, check out this video here. And make sure you subscribe to Seeker for all your medical innovations.
Seekers are very good, and and it's amazing what has come out now. This is not taught in schools. None of these things anymore are taught in schools. You learn these things on TV, you learn them in videos, you learn them in exposés like this and the stuff that I do. Because otherwise it's not allowed to be heard. It's just not allowed. So now pay attention on your own. That's all I can say. I've been saying it over and over, but I can't say it enough because if you just if you go to school to try to learn and think you're going to be educated, you're making a big 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 mistake.